Okay, so we're going to demonstrate how to change the blade on a UE250. Okay, first of all, we need the bow in a raised position. So we use the handle to lift the saw bow up to a midway position, which gives us easy access across the saw. You will notice that the power light is on, which means we have power to the machine. First process is we need to turn off the main power of the saw by turning the isolator switch on the rear of the cabinet, which will then turn the power off to the machine. Safety gear wise, what we expect you to use is a pair of safety glasses, an overall and a pair of gloves because the blade is sharp. And the first process we need to do is we need to move the moving guide arm up to the physical stop and lock it off. The second process is to release both of the blade guards. So now we have access to the tension wheel and the drive wheel. And there is a third guard which needs to be completely removed from the machine, which is held on at the top. So the tools we need, which are supplied in the toolbox, is a 13mm spanner and a 3mm Allen key. The first job is to remove the movie guide guard and we release the bolt and you can simply twist it up out the way, lock it up to hold it in position. So now what we do is we need to remove the position of the swarf brush to give us more clearance. You put your 3 mil Allen key in, we release it and we rotate the brush through 90 degrees and then lock it back up again. Now we have the guards open and the guarding and the swarf brush removed, we need to release the blade tension. On the side of the machine we have a loosen and tighten diagram. And all we're doing is basically releasing the blade tension by turning the screw and you will see that the tension wheel is moving in, releasing the blade tension. Once the blade tension has been released on the tension wheel, we need to remove the blade from within the guide hands and the guide cubes. And the easy way with using the gloves is to grab the blade and knock it out. Okay. Then we need to move around the machine and unfeed the blade from around the tension wheel and the drive wheel, but underlapping the blade from the swarf brush. And then we have a removal of the blade. So once you've removed your blade from the machine, we have a loop, okay? You can either dispose of the blade by throwing it away completely as it is, or you can loop the blade up by standing on the bottom edge of the blade, using both palms of the hand on the outside of the blade, and then twisting it until it loops into a banded loop. So now we are going to replace our blade. So. On the box of the blade, we have the dimensions, which is the number of blades in the box, the length, which is specific to the UE250, the width of the blade, which is 27 millimeters, and the number of teeth per inch. When you remove the blade from the box, a brand new blade will have a plastic protector around the teeth, but this one doesn't. So what we need to do is when we come to unraveling a blade, if it's got the plastic protector on, leave it on for this next process. If you don't have the plastic on there, then we need to hold the blade and look for a loose connection. And if we shuffle them around, you'll see that the blade naturally wants to undo itself. So there is our loose one. We grab it and then we just let the blade come out back to a loop. At this point, you would then remove the plastic protector around the blade and dispose of it into the bin. 
Okay, once the blade is been decoiled and we are holding it with our hands, you can see that a bandsaw blade has teeth on one side of the blade and a flat edge on the outside of the blade. There are arrows fixed on the guide hands to tell you in which direction the teeth are to travel. And generally the golden rule is, is the blade teeth need to face the swarf brush. Around the machine itself, we have on the wheels, there is a shoulder on the wheels. And we present the blade up to the machine, making sure that the teeth are facing in this part of the blade towards the brush. If you put the blade on backwards with the teeth facing outwards, the teeth will cut the shoulders of the wheels and you will need to replace the wheels. So double check, you have the flat edge of the blade facing out of the saw and the teeth facing into the saw in that direction. So to reapply the blade onto the machine, what we need to do is feed it between the swarf brush and the drive wheel. So we took the blade into the machine, twisting it under my swarf brush, and then position it around the saw, like so. Now we have the blade behind the wheels, we need to now twist the blade into the guide hands. We have a set of rollers and we set of carbide pads. And we have rollers on the moving guide arm and carbide pads and rollers on the fixed guide arm. Essentially, all we're going to do is twist the blade and apply it into the carbide pads. So it is hard up against the top of the pad. Now we've got the blade into the guide hands, we need to re-tension the blade. To tension the blade, we tighten up the screw and you'll see the wheel will gradually move out slowly to apply a bit of blade tension. Once we've taken the wheel up and we can feel resistance on the blade, we can see that the blade is pre-tensioned but is still loose. And at this point, we need to lift the blade up to the shoulder of the tension wheel and we complete the same on the drive wheel. So now we have the blade up against the shoulder, we need to tension the blade up fully, but we are continuously inspecting the position of the blade to the shoulder. When you tension the blade up, we have a red marker in the scale and we need to keep tensioning until the red marker levels up with the 1400 figure. So now we're going to reapply the swarf brush. So we release our Allen key grub screw, pull the brush down, rotate the swarf brush, and let the spring apply the brush to the body of the blade. And then we tighten it up, our Allen key. With our 13 mil spanner, we release the moving guide hand guard, and we drop the guard down into position and lock up the screw. So now we've got to retrofit the guarding to the machines. So first of all is the long guard that covers the back of the sorbo. The guard is an L shape and we tuck it into the two screws and tighten them up. So now once the red guard is fixed to the machine, we then close our main guards, which overlap the red guard and lock it in position also. And we tighten up the screws. Both of these guides are controlled by a limit switch. So if the guard is not shut, the limit switch is not made, the machine will not work. And the same with this one. So we remove it, drop it down, Tighten up the thumb screws, and there's our blade change complete. 
So now all our guarding is back in position. We have completed our blade change. We need to do a final inspection, make sure we have got the teeth facing in the correct direction as per the arrows on the machine. And now we're ready to go. So we need to turn the machine back on by the main isolator. Our power light is illuminated, which see, says that the guards are closed and the machine is ready to go. And then we need to push the start button, which will then start the machine up and run. Once you've changed the blade, the blade will self align on the wheels and in the guide hands. And now we're ready to cut.